From spending over $1 million on snakes to having your own parents take advantage of you and blow all of your money away, over the years we've seen several NHL players struggle financially and spend their earnings irresponsibly. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at NHL players who went bankrupt. Sergei Fedorov The year 2002 was a big one for the Detroit Red Wings hockey star Sergei Fedorov. Known as a skilled skater, the Russian led his NHL team to its third Stanley Cup championship since he joined them in 1990. On top of that, he watched his girlfriend professional tennis player Anna Kornikova play at Wimbledon and then married her. It was certainly a high point for Sergei Fedorov and he shared his joy with friend Joseph Zada, who Fedorov trusted with his millions of dollars. This is where everything began to fall apart. Fedorov's marriage to Kornikova crumbled, he was repeatedly traded in the NHL, and then he learned that roughly $40 million he invested with Zada was completely gone. When asked to comment on their relationship, Fedorov had this to say, He was very nice when we talked. We had very deep discussions. He was very smart. We shared a passion for cars and nice things in life. Fedorov and Zada were so close that when the Red Wings won the Stanley Cup in 2002, Fedorov took the cup to Zada's Michigan home and passed it around among party guests. Fedorov was among 20 people Zada invited to board his private jet to Palm Beach for an all-expense-paid weekend in Las Vegas. The two clearly had a great relationship, which made this even harder to believe for Fedorov. Fedorov, who is one of the best players to ever play in the NHL, became the star witness for federal prosecutors in a fraud case they were building against Zada in U.S. District Court in West Palm Beach. Zada was charged with 15 counts of fraud and three charges of making false statements on loan applications in connection with what prosecutors claim was a $20 million plus Ponzi scheme. Theo Fleury Theo Fleury was one of the highest scoring players in the league in 1999 and because of that he was rewarded with a $28 million contract. Theo Fleury played in the NHL from 1988 until 2003 and made an estimated $41 million throughout his career. Although he had a great career, he had a drinking and drug problem and was an avid gambler which led to his bankruptcy. Fleury says that the kind of money he made led him to a party-based lifestyle and he ended up spending over $50 million over the course of his career. By the time he retired in 2003, nearly all his money was gone. However, looking back on it now, Fleury admits he's happier now with a more stable, modest life than when he was making and spending $8 million a year. Darren McCarty Darren McCarty found himself filing for bankruptcy while he was still playing in the NHL, but as we'll see through this video, that's actually not at all uncommon among players. McCarty filed for bankruptcy while playing for the Calgary Flames, citing the previous season's lockout as a major factor in his need to file for bankruptcy. McCarty, who was involved in over 200 fights on the ice, cited debts totaling well over $6 million while having less than $2 million in assets at the time. Sergei Gonchar Gonchar was one of the many players who became a victim of Phil Kenner, who is a disgraced financial advisor who got his hands on the money of many NHLers. Gonchar was one of up to 19 NHL players who were defrauded of as much as $25 million as part of an investment to develop golf courses, hotels, and condos on property in Mexico. One of Kenner's partners, real estate investor Ken Jowdy, allegedly blew all of the investment dollars on adult entertainers and party girls, according to a lawsuit filed on behalf of Sergey Gonchar and the rest of the NHL involved. Can you imagine giving your financial advisor millions of dollars only to find out that he spent it all on prostitutes? Now that is a hard pill to swallow. Robin Leonard Vegas Golden Knights goaltender Robin Leonard and his wife have filed for bankruptcy in Nevada, citing up to $50 million in debts to dozens of creditors. The Chapter 7 bankruptcy filing offers a glimpse into the couple's financial problems, including money owed to no fewer than 50 people and companies. They filed for bankruptcy months after a Wisconsin company sued Leonard for $4 million, claiming that the NHL player and his father failed to make any payments on a business loan. Robin Leonard's debts also included missed payments for a collection of rare snakes he purchased for $1.2 million in 2017, according to the bankruptcy filing. He and his wife estimated that their assets are worth up to $10 million, and Leonard signed a five-year $25 million contract with the Golden Knights in 2020, 
However, he has not played since the 2021-22 season and has been spending his time recovering from his hip surgery. Derek Sanderson Derek Sanderson spent his earnings so quickly that he ultimately ended up broke and homeless despite having secured a massive sum of money. $2.65 million to be exact, which was a lot of money considering the era he played in. The full amount of that contract was paid up front and Sanderson spent all his money on illegal substances and ill-advised investments. Fortunately, Sanderson eventually found sobriety and became a financial advisor himself, using his personal experience to help others avoid the situation he encountered during the 1970s. Kevin Stevens When Kevin Stevens hit rock bottom, it seemed as if there was no coming back. After being arrested alongside a lady of the night, while in possession of $500 worth of illegal substances, Kevin Stevens faced felony charges in Missouri, according to the New York Times. The fact that Stevens was married with two kids and another on the way only made this situation way worse. Stevens ultimately entered the NHL substance abuse program and was able to play two more seasons in the NHL before retiring in 2002. It's a sad story as he was once a promising athlete and a strong student in school before inevitably losing it all due to substance abuse. Jack Johnson in an unbelievable string of events, Johnson was forced to file for bankruptcy due to the poor financial decisions made by his own parents. Johnson had entrusted the people who had raised him to manage his finances so he could focus on his hockey career, which turned out to be a massive mistake. Even Johnson himself admits that he trusted the wrong people. His parents made so many poor financial decisions that Johnson claimed in the bankruptcy filing that he had a debt of $10 million and had less than $50,000 worth of assets. The situation was so bad that Johnson's $5 million salary at the time couldn't even help him. Johnson has since turned around his financial situation, but I'm sure he'll never trust his parents with his money ever again. Evander Kane Back in 2021, Evander Kane filed for federal Chapter 7 bankruptcy in California, even though in that season he was scheduled to make $3 million, and at that point in his career, he had earned nearly $53 million playing in the NHL. The bankruptcy documents listed slightly more than $10 million in assets and nearly $27 million in liabilities. Nearly all of Kane's assets were in the form of property, namely a $3 million home in San Jose and two houses in Vancouver valued at a combined $5.26 million. However, the documents also showed that Kane owed nearly $16 million in unpaid loans, plus more than $250,000 in unpaid federal and state taxes, and nearly $80,000 in credit card charges. Additionally, he owed his former agents nearly $530,000 and was also involved in a $1.3 million arbitration dispute with a company called Sure Sports, who were a financial services firm geared towards professional athletes that arranged an eight $8.3 million loan for Kane with Centennial Bank. Kane used that $8.3 million loan in 2018 and 2019 to pay off other high interest debt, which accumulated from years of gambling and an expensive lifestyle. Between the years of 2014 and 2019, Evander Kane took out 27 loans with rates as high as 18%. When asked to comment on this, Kane said, I was trying to put out as many fires as I could at any particular time. A lot of times using gambling as a way to survive. And there were times where you know it did help me survive. And there were times where it buried me. Thanks for watching our videos. Don't forget to leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button.